Hello again, everyone. It's Ariel Hawani here on this Thursday afternoon, being joined by the one and only, the inimitable, the often imitated, never duplicated, <laughs> the voice of the octagon. There is only one Bruce Buffer, and he's sitting right over there, thousands of miles away from me, but it's so great to see him again. Bruce, how are you? Well, we're practicing social distancing, right? That's so right. we got to get it right. I'm great, Ariel. And as always, I love your introductions. Thank you, my friend. I hope you're great, safe, sane, all that goes with it. Yes, thank you so much. All is good here. And it's so great to talk to you. It's been a while. I was yeah. nervous that I offended you because you've been uh, very distant from me, but I'm glad one of the very first interviews that I ever did related to MMA. Bruce Buffer, I'm a kid, Syracuse University. I write an email to, I believe, brucebuffer.tv, right? That was around back in 2001? Back, back then, yeah. <laughs> you were one of the first to have a website and you responded within seconds. You had no idea who I was. You gave me so much of, of your day that, that morning. It was a morning in uh, September, October of 2001. I'll never forget it. So almost 20 years later, Bruce, here we are still kicking it. 20 years later, um, I remember that very vividly. And I was always about, always about building MMA and doing everything I could to build the UFC brand and still am. But more importantly, Ariel, your revolutionary process, the success you've reached with ESPN, everything you've done, your show with Chael, which is awesome. Um, I can't I can't commend you enough. I've had the pleasure of watching you grow into a career that's just absolutely amazing. What a role model you've become yourself, my friend. Oh, I, thank I you. just congratulate you, and I'm so proud of you. Thank you, Bruce. That yeah. means uh, that means the world to me coming from you. So um, I'm curious because I've talked to a lot of fighters, a lot of cornermen, coaches, managers about the past month or so in our sport. As you know, a crazy time. Uh, the UFC, the first major North American sports league to come back, holding three events in Jacksonville back this weekend, uh, May 30th at the Apex, so back in Las Vegas. And I've gone their perspective on the events, but what a, what a role you have in all of this because you're the yeah. one that gets everyone excited. People say it along with you. It's time, and you're there to you know take the energy of the crowd and pass it along to the fighters and get us all pumped up. You are a fixture when it comes to the events. The events thank aren't you. the same without you. What oh, has it you. been like for you to do your part with the same energy, with the same pizzazz, but in an empty arena. No problem. No Piece problem. Of cake. Piece of cake. I'll tell you why. Um, when there's 20,000 in the arena, 50,000, 10,000, millions watching on TV, every night for the last 24 plus years that I've been in the octagon, when I announce, I am looking, you know me, Ariel, you see me announce, I am looking into the eye of the tiger, okay? I am focused on the fighter. My job <laughs> at that point, is to the show is not about me it's about the fighter and it's for the fans and looking into their eye announcing in the way i do them allowing me to enter their space close interaction whether it's tj dillashaw dan hardy michael chiesa however that however the announcement goes because i never know what i'm going to do till i do it i don't rehearse i get in there feed off the crowd and organically do it but in this case there's no crowd hmm. but i'm still looking in the eye of the tiger so when i announce normally i don't even hear the crowd even the biggest days, biggest shows you can imagine. When, when I was in uh, Brazil in uh, the uh, early 2000s or whatever, when we went back and we had the first show in Sao Paulo and 20,000 people yelled, it's time to me. Stitch Duran, the cut man, told me after I got out of the octagon, Buff, did you hear that? They all said, it's time with you. And I said, he goes, it was the most amazing thing I've ever seen. And I'm like, no, I didn't hear it. I didn't hear it because I don't hear it. I wow. focused on the fighter. So now there's no audience. And the UFC is doing such a great job production-wise of bringing it across. You hear the punches louder. You hear the kicks louder. You hear the coaches louder. You hear the commentators louder. It, it, I think it still has a great air for it. And when it comes to me and my announcing, it's the same. you know. So I get in there, and I know more importantly than ever, I've got to put on the show to, to give it that show feeling. And that's no problem. I can still do it. And I'm not being false. I'm being real. I'm bringing all the energy because that's what I'm feeling at that moment. In terms of your voice, do you feel like you you speak differently? You 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 speak into the microphone a little differently because there's no one there, or do you not even let that affect you as well? Oh no, it it is affecting, and I'll tell you why. Because when there's no audience there, I actually hear myself. Right. <laughs> so when I hear myself better, I can intonate and maybe inflect a little better in because I'm I can hear myself. So maybe there might be a little bit of a difference, a crisper intonation or something at key moments okay right? so that yeah i can notice a bit of a difference and i when i watch the show i can actually hear a bit of a difference but again that's because there's no crowd noise around me and you're hearing my voice as if i was recording into a voiceover recorder right now. right 
Yeah. And and when you're sitting there, okay, let's say okay, you you've done the announcement and then you go back to your seat cage side. What's it been like to watch? You're one of the few people on on the planet who gets to watch these events live live right now. What, what is that like for you? Well, it's incredible. I, I'm not saying I wanted to stay this way because I miss the fans, right? Right. And usually I'm spending half the evening taking pictures with the fans and, and adoringly so because they deserve every bit of attention they get paying their hard-earned money and being living the USC lifestyle they lead. I'm all about the fans. But now with COVID-19 and the pandemic, I can't even get close to take pictures. So that's mm. out of the picture. I can't shake hands. That's out of the picture. We're going through some changes. But when I get out of the octagon, normally I'm sitting right on the octagon uh edge there right beside where the fighters walk up and right beside the red corner now i have a table about 20 feet back from the octagon right 15 20 feet and i've got a nice six foot table for myself i'm sitting alone i'm distance i'm enjoying the fights more than ever right i'm not getting up to take pictures with the fans which <laughs> again i'm always happy to do i can actually sit there have a front row seat with 50 people in the arena or whatever it is watching these great male and female warriors putting their blood, sweat, and tears on the line of my favorite sport, aside from surfing, which is my favorite sport. Um, I'm, a, I'm a kid in the candy store, Ariel. So again, I try to take the negatives and make them into a positive. The UFC just did such a great job on safety and protocol with all of us, testing us and made us feel safe. And we're in the arena, the mass, everything. Out. I mean, their safety protocol, 150%. So we got through that. We showed the world we can have a show. And I'm enjoying it. I can't wait till the fans come back, but I have no problem. I'm not complaining a bit. And also back to announcing. Remember, I've done a number of movies and TV shows and, and green screen videos that I do. So when you're in green screen, like making a movie and you got to go full bore. Right. There's nobody around. I'm used to that. Right. That's a great so point. It, not, not my first rodeo. Uh, speaking of which, I understand in addition to the UFC work, you've been very busy because people need you right now more than ever yeah. because we're, you know, all in our homes and you know, no graduation, birthday parties and whatnot. What has uh, the business of Bruce Buffer been like since this pandemic started? Well, um, again, making pause out of negatives, but business is booming and it's booming in different ways. There's people out there, you know, spokesperson services. I'm, I'm working, coming out with my own uh, bourbon, which you may have heard about. Oh, uh, Yep, my bourbon is going to be called Puncher's Chance. Okay, so I'm working on that. We've we've acquired uh, fifty thousand to hundred thousand barrels of the finest Kentucky bourbon you can possibly imagine, and we're planning on releasing our bourbon in uh, September, right around there. I've also got a toiletry line. I'm coming out with <laughs> the It's Time cologne and facial, uh, you know, deodorant and facial care and the whole bit. That'll be coming out the first of the year. So I have a lot of work going on developing these. But as far as like people are. I've been doing a lot, as always, of championship introductions, audios and videos that people order through at brucebuffer.com, and they can order through cameo.com and there too. But what's happened is I think people are stay at home and they're looking for entertainment. I'm getting requests for people that have suffered from COVID-19 that now they got through it and they need that motivational, I need to get back to my world again. Um, birth of babies, weddings are always big, although weddings are getting canceled now until the fall for obvious reasons. Uh, people want feel good uh, graduations. I've done a ton of graduations. Wow. Uh, kids are not having their graduation ceremonies or I mean, virtual graduations. So my partner, Chris and I decided to come up with a thing for graduations and help enhance those moments for them. And we've been inundated with orders for that. And mother's day was big and father's day. And you know, they just, people want to feel good. They're going through tough times right now. Right. And we give partial proceeds to COVID-19 animal military and children charities. We, we're all about give, paying it forward and giving it back here at Buffer Enterprises. And the fans, if I can give them a championship introduction that's a keepsake for life to put a big smile on their face so they feel like I can knock out and take on the world. Well, hey, I'm the first one to do that for you. I love By the way, could I ask a strangest request you ever received? I've had a couple. I think one of the ones that, that this, well, I've had a number of these. They want me to do the eulogy for when they die. So they no, can play what? it at their funeral. Yeah. Wait, so they ask you before they die? Really? Yeah, it's happened. Yeah. Wow. I know. That wow. Is... And then <laughs> that, that was crazy. And then the but birth You don't know of these baby... people, right? No. no. So how do you. I don't, I don't know any of these people. Do they tell you like about their life and then you. Well, it's. I I told them that I would take, I would do it. Yeah. And I'm, it's like they didn't get back to me with the script. Right. Oh my gosh. Because <laughs> I can't, I can't write that script. Of course. Yeah. I could massage their script and make it sound better. But um, I've had this request on more than one occasion, you know, wow. and the other one was the birth of babies were always funny. Like, Coming out now, <laughs> you know, that kind of thing. That's I even uh, um, churches will 
I've had churches contact me where their Sunday service, they want me to do a big introduction to Jesus Christ, you know, for their wow. church. And I'm not, I'm, I, I'm very spiritual, right? When I say, God bless you, I mean, whoever your God is, I hope they bless you because right. many people have different gods, right? So even though I'm not of that denomination, if I can enhance the moment for the parishioners in the church and light it up for them, well, why not? You know, I, so many different, I can't begin to tell you so many different <laughs> announcements. Wow. Oh, um, a man wants to marry his, his wife, right? Uh. They want me to do a video uh, to enhance or to get the woman engaged so that she'll say yes to when he's going to ask her to marry him. You know, all these different things come in. So that's all that. Uh, and, and that's brucebuffer.com where people can. Yeah, just go to that. brucebuffer.com. There's an order form there for the championship intros. If it's a different type of intro, just send a detailed email to info at brucebuffer.com. And uh, you'll usually get answered by Kristen, my partner, and she'll get it all set up and we'll give you all the info. That's great. I, I'm open to any suggestion. <laughs> Keep it classy. Keep yes, it classy. Of course, okay. of course. Um, as I mentioned, you're synonymous with the UFC, mixed martial arts. Your brother, Michael, is synonymous with the world of boxing. I'm just curious, as far as the world of pro wrestling is concerned, the voice that is synonymous with that yeah. world is Howard Finkel. Unfortunately, uh, he, he passed, passed away, away recently. Yeah. Uh, what did you What did you think of Howard Finkel and the way he did his job? And I'm curious, did you ever have a chance to meet him? Because to me, uh, you are the Howard Finkel of the UFC. <laughs> he is the Bruce Buffer of World Wrestling Entertainment. And that's the, the best compliment that I could give both of you. I thought that he was incredible at his job. Yeah. What did you think was, of him? And did you ever meet him? Well, he, he never worked with WCW. He was more WWE, right? Yeah. That's right. Okay. I had not met Howard because I've not been to a WWE event, but I worked in the WCW for years back in the 90s when I had the big contract for Michael. And I would go to the shows as his manager and I worked with, you know, Hulk Hogan and Sting and all the guys, you know, Macho Man Savage. Some of the greatest experiences of my life. So much fun, right? For so many reasons. Uh, Howard Finkel, legend, icon, great at what he does. I never had the chance to meet him. I've always respected him. Um, you know, announcers are distinct again because whatever their it factor they have. But like I always tell announcers when they write me, you know, give me some tips, give me this. The first thing I tell them is create your own style, right? Mm -hmm. If anybody could have copied somebody, it's me. I could have copied my legendary brother, Michael Buffer, the greatest announcer of all time. But I didn't want to be Frank Sinatra Jr. I'll look at all the different aspects of different announcers, but I wanted to create my own style. And I told myself if within two or three years of starting, if I didn't, I was going to quit. I didn't want to be that guy. I wanted to be Bruce Buffer, right? Well, that's what a guy like Howard Finkel, you know, he did. He, an individual, individual style, unique, iconic, legendary, be remembered forever. So sorry to hear about his passing. Mm. And I know you're a big wrestling fan, right? Have been for years. And me too. I mean, it's entertainment. I, I It cracks me up. I love it. It's these guys <laughs> give them all the credit in the world. These men and women, they bust their butts, man. They work hard, work hard. When, when you're, you know, in the spotlight doing your thing, it's entertaining in its own right. But then when the fighter engages with you, you mentioned some of those names, like, you know, Dan Hardy yeah. calling you over, Michael Chiesa, it just makes it all that much more fun. Is there one particular interaction with a fighter that, you know, he, he or she continues to do that you say like, oh, so-and-so is fighting tonight, so-and-so is coming up, I'm really looking forward to this. Is there one or two in particular that really draws the best out in you? Um, yeah, there are a couple because I know that something's going to happen and they're going to dictate the pace because whenever a fighter, uh, fist bumps me, I never instigate that. That's the mm. fighter coming to me. Nowadays, I, I used to throw a mean elbow when I was kickboxing so I can cover two or three feet and get that fist with the elbow. Otherwise I got to run to the bathroom and wash my hands and I don't have time to do that during a show. Right. So all kidding aside, I know when Michael Chiesa walks in the octagon that I know something's going to happen. You know, he's practically putting his forehead right on my forehead when I'm announcing <laughs> TJ. I know TJ is going to trot and walk back and forth. But as soon as I'm about to roar his name, he's going to get in my face, you know, do that thing he does. Dan Hardy, there was always that chemistry between Dan Hardy and me, which started it all. Um, and there's there's other fighters, too. It, it's it's such an honor, Ariel. It, that is the hugest honor in the world that they would acknowledge me, even with a fist bump much less allow me to walk into their space. You know how I get in the octagon where they could like, boop, get out of there, right? Yep. Um, every night to me is my first night, a night that I have to prove to myself, to the fighters, to the fans, to Dana White and the powers that be that I deserve this job. So every time I walk in that octagon, as I will, not this weekend, um, Joe Martinez will be announcing this weekend, but I will be there June 6th, 20th and 27th. Um, those will be, June 6th is going to be my first night in the octagon. 
I've maintained this, this feeling for the last 24 plus years that I've been announcing in the octagon since 1996. And that's what keeps me driven. I mean, you know me, I'm full of passion and I'm full of drive. And when my passion wanes for what I love to do in life, which is my beloved UFC and my office, the octagon, then I'll probably come on your show and say, I'm going to retire. How many more years do you think you have left in you? Have you thought about that? Yeah, I thought about it. Um, I think 10 plus more years. Wow. Okay. So yeah, we've got a lot more I, Bruce to go. Oh man. I'm, I told you, man, I'm in shape. I'm ready to rock. I'll, I'll go out there and take on any 30 year old tomorrow morning. No problem. Does that mean we're going to see the, the 360 again? No, the 360 was one and done. Can I do uh, it again? Of course I can. But you know what? Certain things, Joe Rogan and I actually discussed that. And he came up because, you know, you should never do that again. It'll be remembered forever. And I said, I was thinking the same thing, Joe. And, you know, again, the show's not about me, but if that's a moment that'll last forever, then let's keep it that way. Can I do a 360? I'll do it right now. Nope. <laughs> Maybe for the last one ever. <laughs> well, let's see if that's a 72 or a yeah, 65. Okay. Right. <laughs> <laughs> we'll decide that at that time, but you can better believe that in, in my seventies, I'll still be rocking it. If I can't announce the way I announce now, when I, when I, if, let's say physically, I ever can't announce the way I announce now, much less travel the world 35 times a year or want to. Mm -hmm. We'll take that into consideration. Uh, I've asked you I this do. over the years, um, favorite moments, favorite fights that you got to be a part of. Now, you know, several years later, is there a new number one? Is there one that comes to mind? Man, that is a night. That is an event. That is a fight that I'll never forget. God, there's so many, Ariel. Every time I think I've seen the best fight, two months later, I see the best fight. Two weeks yeah. later, I see the best fight. Every time I think I see a great show, look at these great shows we've had, you know, through 2019 and then into this year. Every time I think I've seen the greatest show and suddenly it happens again. This is the beauty of the UFC and, and the beauty of the, of the Warriors that go in that octagon, putting their all on the floor. You know, I can't pinpoint one. I can only tell you about many, right? I mean, if you want to get down to facts and figures, the first Jacksonville, Florida show that we put on there, the great show that it was, that was a historical night for many reasons other than the fights taking place in the octagon. So that has a big set in my head. UFC 100, UFC 200. I could go on and on and on. All the way back to the wars with, with uh, you know, Peter Belfort, and Randy Couture, Pedro Hizzo and Randy Couture, you know, bowing to Randy Couture. You know, those are my Randy Couture moments. This, that's why I wrote my book, It's Time. I probably forgot more than I can remember. And that was a way for me to remember everything again. Right. And I want to write It's Time again, the next book, pretty soon. Because I, I, want, I want to remember everything again. But I have some other pretty interesting announcements you're going to hear in the next six months. I just can't oh, yeah? talk about it right now. Ah, jeez, Bruce. Thanks I, Ariel, you know me. I'd love to come on your show. We'll, yeah. I'll come on your show. We'll break it to the world. How's Deal. It? Deal. Okay. Now, let me ask you dream fight that you never got to see that you wish you got to see and what's a fight that you want to see in this day and age that is not booked like it's not coming up in two months but you say all right we have to see this one give me those two answers what comes to mind i always wanted to see anderson silva and george st pierre mm -hmm. i always wanted to see that fight i thought it would be awesome fights coming up i would love to see conor mcgregor and nate diaz have the trilogy fight i would really love to see that fight definitely um Kamaru Usman and Connor, that could be a very strong fight. But I think uh, I think I'd just love for pure fan's sake to see Connor and Nate go at it. Yeah, in an empty arena. Imagine then you can hear the trash talking and the punches and all that. Oh, stuff. Oh, would that be fun or what? That would be fun. Yeah. That would It'd be, be interesting to see Connor walking out, you know, to no arena versus walking out to uh, whoever's singing the song and whatever doing anything. You know, it'd be it's always a big night when Connor McGregor steps in the octagon. Anyway. Now, one thing I've always wanted to ask you: How many? suits slash tuxedos do you own i actually don't know the number but i think i have about 50 or 60 of them right now that's it what do you do with the other ones because you definitely um, have worn more than that oh yeah well i have in storage you know I've, I've never auctioned off one of my tuxedos yet i was thinking about putting out the one i wore at usc 100 because i saw the fight cars and the shoes and wow. and everything but um i have some in storage and i've got a closet and when i when i go back let's say the 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 tuxedo was at the front because maybe I wore it six months ago, unless I have a brand new one. So I wear it, I come back home and it goes to the back of the rack. It has to make its way forward again to a key moment when I'll pick it up again. Cause I only wear them. Maybe you might see me wear the same tuxedo, maybe twice a year. You know? Yeah. That's a, Well, the thing is, I mean, obviously you'll remember it more than us, but I feel like every time it's a new tuxedo, I feel like you never wear it more than once. The beauty of a man's suit is you can put a different handkerchief, a different tie, a different shirt and make it look different different pair of pants. So yeah, that happens. But um, I might, I may have more, but you know, there's a lot of money that goes to the tuxedos. Ariel, so. Same tailor. 
Yeah, my tailors are exclusive. They're uh, King and Bay out of Toronto, Canada. Oh. Go to Instagram, just go to at my King and Bay or at my King and Bay dot com. And the beauty of them is because a lot of fighters go to them since I started wearing their tuxedos, but you can order through their website and they can deliver to you anywhere in the United States. And um, you won't have to pay the prices. I, you know, my, my tuxedos are, they have, you can dress with such style. They're incredible. Check them out. And I love not, it. I, I just, I love them. They're great. They're just really cool people. I've never, oh, met, a root, I, I've never met a root Canadian in my life. Including the this one, right? In the world. Yeah, that's why I said it. I know. <laughs> Well, those I've met, men, I've met a lot of inebriated ones, but not rude. <laughs> not this one. Um, the suits never cease to uh, to impress. I'm I'm amazed by your suits. I love them. It's one of the highlights to see. Okay, what is Bruce going to be wearing today? And you still perform with the pizzazz and the oomph and the passion, Thank the you. charisma that you had, you know, 20 years ago. So it's really incredible to watch you and your evolution because you are a fixture. And I've been in those arenas, especially in Brazil for some reason. It seems like the Brazilian fans they love screaming it's time with you at the at the exact same moment that you say it so it's really been amazing to see you become a fixture and it wouldn't be the same without you bruce so always great to catch up with you i'm glad that business is booming that you're able to help people out in these crazy times and i'm glad that we'll be uh seeing you and hearing from you at ufc 250 thanks so much thanks Ariel. it's always a pleasure my friend my best to you and your family my best to all your great listeners and the ufc fans out there and i wish everybody to stay safe, stay sane, be positive. We're going to come out of this. We're going to be stronger than ever. And for those of you that are suffering, my my feelings and everything go out to you. So I, I just believe in paying it forward every chance I get, Ariel. Thank you for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+.